Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and welcome to this video on working out order from initial rate tables to. So this video is going to show you an example of the classic uh, order type questions uh, that you'd get in your exam, but it's a lot more difficult. And the reason why is because we will have a reagent here where the concentration is changing through every experiment that we've got, which makes it really difficult to work out individual orders for other reagents. So we're going to use the data table here, which shows us initial uh, rates. Uh, and this time I've changed it a little bit um, because the way in which we work this out has to be different to how we work it out normally. And so what I've done is I've added an extra column on the end, which I find helps to work these things out properly. And I've called that interim rates. And I'll, I'll explain where this comes into uh, in a minute. Okay, so you see what have we got? We've got uh, three different uh, reagents. We've got A, B, and C, and we have um, four different experiments that we've repeated. And uh, you can see uh, that we have uh, the rates as well for each of these experiments. So we've obviously mixed A, B, and C in this uh, ratio of concentrations, and we've measured the rate of this reaction. So um, what we need to do is just like with any other rate table, um, we need to work out the orders of A, B, and C. Now, just before I move on to this, I do want to say that there is a much more easier rate table um, example that I've done as well. So if you're looking for that type of video and you're not quite ready to jump onto this really tough one, uh, then just click on the link below and you can have a look at that one there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by looking at what we've got. So you can see here that we're looking for um, areas where the concentration is changing for one reagent, but not changing for others. Now. If we look at, um, perhaps if we look at A, we can see this one. If we want to work out A, you can see this one is changing. It's actually halving here, but you can see C is remaining constant, which is good, but B isn't. So we can't really tell which one, you know, if the change in rate is caused by A or B, because B is changing as well, which is quite annoying. Um, and we can pick another one, for example, we can pick uh, this one and this one, so one and four. Um, again, we're not going to do that one because C is changing and B is changing. So if we do two and four, uh, again, C is changing, so is B. So that's going to be quite difficult to work out A. So what we're going to do is actually, we're not going to do it in the traditional order whereby we work out A first. We're actually going to work out B first. Now, you don't have to do them in this particular order. You can do whatever order you want. But the crucial thing is, is to find one, and there will be one, where just to get you started initially, um, where you can find um, one reagent concentration has been, has been changed, but the other two are remaining constant, because really that's what you need to just get started, really. So we'll have a look at B. Now, we're looking for a change in concentration for B, uh, but a, a fixed amount for the other two. So you can see here, actually, there's one there. You see we're going from 0.1 to 0.4, but luckily A is remaining the same, and so is C. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, I'm going to do this in red so it will show up uh, pretty well. Uh, this one, actually, you can see, is actually increasing by 4, by a factor of 4. So we effectively multiply it by 4. Uh, and then what we need to do is look at the rate, and we need to comment on what is the rate doing. Now you can see here we're going from 0 0.80 times 10 to the minus 3 to 3.20 times by 10 to the minus 3. So this one is actually increasing by a factor of 4. And the way in which you can work that out is really simply do 3.20 times by 10 to the minus 3 divided by... 0 0.80 times by 10 to the minus 3, and you should tell you your factor, um, and the factor here is 4. So put times 4 there. So because this one is multiplying by 4 as well, we've worked out our first order. So uh, B is actually first order. Whoops, if I could write it properly. There you go. So B is first order because as we, quad as we quadruple 4, uh, the rate quadruples as well. And we know that's got to be because of B, because we're not changing C and we're not changing A. So that makes it pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're on to the next one. So uh, let's come back to A. Now we know the order for B, we can now work out other things effectively. So what we're looking for is a change in A. Um, now you can see there's a change in A here. We've got 0.2 to 0.1. Uh, we do have a change in B, but that's not so much of a problem because we know what effect B has on the reaction. We've just worked it out before. Um, and then, uh, but you can see here, C is also constant, and that's important because we don't know C yet. So we're going to stick the two and three. So if we come down to this one, so this one is effectively uh, being halved. It's divided by two. Okay, but the problem is um, now because we've halved that, um, we have a problem because B is actually having an effect here as well, uh, and so we can't say that the 
rate is changing purely because of A, because B obviously has an effect as well, because you know it's first order. And so this is where our interim rate comes in. So we're going to start by looking at this one here. So we're going to look at uh, B. Now B is uh, doubling. We're going from 0.4 to 0.8 within the two, uh, the same experiments. So we're going to put times by two there. Now we know that B uh, is first order. So we know that any effect on rate because of B changing would be double. So if we start from here, here's your 0 0.4, we're saying it's been doubled here. So 3.20 times by 10 to the minus three going to 1.6. Now what we can say is the effect of B is double the rate. So that was the rate initially. So the interim rate to help us work it out would actually be 6.40 times by 10 to the minus three. So the effect of B purely would take it to that rate there, okay, which is this one. So now we've identified what the rate would be because of B, we can then work out the difference uh, for A. Now you can see that this rate here doesn't match the rate here. So this suggests that A is actually having an effect on the reaction, but we need to know how much of an effect is it having. And so what we need to do is we need to work out what the difference is between this rate because of B uh, and this rate. So uh, all we have to do is we take the bigger number, we divide it by the smaller number, and we should get a factor of divide by four. So this has been quartered effectively. So you can see here that this effect is because of C only. So uh, because of A only, sorry. So A has been halved, but this has effectively been quartered. So what we can say is that when we've halved A, the rate has quartered so that means that a is actually second order as a result so this is where this interim rate is the interim rate just tells us the effect of one of the reagents but then we use that number to work out the effect of just a so effectively we're taking out that factor for b okay so we've got that on there uh, and then the last one we have to work out is uh, the effect of c so um if we well, again we're looking for a change in c um, and you can see that we have a change here. So it's going from 0 0.4, which is here, and we're going to go to 0 0.20. But again, we're looking for uh, a one that actually remains the same. So we're looking for no change. So we have no change here. This is for A, so that's pretty good. Uh, and we have um, a change here, which is what we need for C. But importantly, we actually have a change with B, which again is quite annoying because it's changing. But it's not a problem because we know the order for B. So if we look at the change from here to here, now this change, if we put that into our calculator, put 0 0.80 divided by 0 0.30, we should find out uh, what the multiplier is or effectively what we're dividing it by. So this one's getting smaller. So this is divide by 2.6 if you put that into a calculator. So divide by 2.6. So then what we have to do is we then look at the rate over here. And you can see this one going from here to here is also divided by 2.6. So this change in rate uh, is purely because of B. Now, despite the fact that C is changing, it hasn't changed the rate any further. So what that suggests to us is that C is actually zero order. Um, so in that case, we just put zero for C. And so that is how we work it out. You can see there's a lot of kind of like messing around here, but you have to take into account the change in concentration of other reagents. If another one is changing, work that one out first. You need to work out what the rate is, what the rate would be just for that, and then compare with the rate that they've given you in the table to see if it's actually correct. Uh, the final thing I suppose is to write out the rate equation for this. So the rate equation, so we'll put rate equals K, which is the rate constant, uh, and it's concentration of A squared, because it's second order, times by the concentration of B, nothing on there because that's just first order, and C doesn't have any effect, so we don't include C in our rate equation. But um, there we go, a tougher example, um, quite a few marks, but make sure you use this uh, interim rate because it really helps to make sure that you've got all the numbers there. But um, that's it. Bye-bye.